Hello, my name's Tim Canfer. I'm a music and music technology lecturer at Barnsley College. This podcast is an introduction to how sound works. Sound is vibration of air molecules produced live. Audio is the reproduction of that sound. So, as I'm creating this podcast, the sounds that I'm making are heard originally by myself and Chris, our cameraman director. The capturing of these sounds is called audio. Now clearly the stuff coming out of your headphones or speakers is going to be sound, but it's been changed subtly from the original sounds that I made in producing this podcast. To capture, reproduce and manipulate sound effectively, it's important to know how it works, which means tackling some basic physics. No physics of sound is complete without using a multicolored slinky like this one. The reason we use a multicolored slinky is because it's a great way to represent mechanical longitudinal waves. Sound is a mechanical longitudinal wave and a slinky is a very good way to visually represent how these work. A few definitions then. A wave in common terms is if you wave your hand. But this also demonstrates what a wave is in scientific terms. A wave in physics is defined as a periodic disturbance. A disturbance because it moves and a periodic because it repeats, one period being one repetition. So if I periodically disturb my hand, I'm waving, albeit scientifically. A mechanical wave is a wave that needs matter or material to transmit it. If I wave my hand, the energy doesn't really go anywhere. People moving in a Mexican wave is a good example of a ripple of moving energy. Individually, the people only stand up and sit down, but because that movement's picked up and carried on, it looks like something's moving. Sound is the same, as are the links of a slinky. If I stretch this slinky across the table, I can send pressure waves along its length or longitudinally. So, this type of wave is mechanical because it needs the coils of the spring to transmit the energy. It's longitudinal because the energy moves along its length. And it's a wave because it repeats. Sound is similar, but instead of the spring coils, the material is air. Specifically, all the molecules of air spread out loosely. This is a graphical example of a pressure wave moving along air molecules. If you look at an individual point, you'll notice that it doesn't continually keep moving to the right as it initially seems. This is periodic disturbance. Each point is transmitting its energy onto the next and creating areas of compression and refraction. It's worth noting the difference between how we draw sound waves and how they actually work. Clearly it would be a real pain if we had to keep drawing these areas of compression and refraction. So what we actually do is we draw the movement of a point. In scientific terms, we plot the displacement of a particle. We can demonstrate this by turning our graphic through the vertical. That is, the points will now be moving up and down instead of left and right. If we can then imagine a piece of paper moving along to the right underneath this and us drawing on that piece of paper onto one point, we'll see something we should recognise. A sine wave. This is what it looks like with just a single frequency. A sine wave is a pure tone, there are no other frequencies, no other sound present. What we're looking at is displacement, that is movement, in the vertical, the y-axis. And we're looking at time in the horizontal, the x-axis. This is why this is called the time domain. We also represent sound in the frequency domain, and this would appear to be a spike for the sine wave, or bars like you have on the front of a stereo showing you how much bass and treble you have. 